One of the things I love about our Tormach lathe is the fact that we've got both a turret with eight tools and a gang block that holds at least three, sometimes four if you get really creative. The problem with that is coolant and you really need coolant. So what we've done to date is this ball valve system where we sit there and we manually open and close the ball valves to adjust between the two. Let's go through how we can automate this. We're gonna use PathPilot, we're gonna use Tormox USB IO circuit board, some solenoids, and edit the post infusion. Welcome to another Wednesday widget. So this line here comes in from our coolant tank and normally that line would run straight to say the turret to provide coolant to the turret. We just created a T or a Y here and they've got these black check valves in there so the coolant doesn't backflow. And right now, let's see, right now this one's open so if we turn the coolant on, you can see it's going to the turret. And if I leave it on there but adjust these valves, you can see it runs over to the gang plate. So that's the task at hand. Use the USB IO interface, which is really cool. It's a circuit board with some relays on it. And we're gonna use these coolant capable solenoids, link in the video description. I got one out here actually, to um, hook this thing up. We'll walk through the wiring. And the best part folks, my buddy Matt Nichols over at Autodesk helped show us just how easy it is to edit our post so that it looks at what tool is being called up and opens the right coolant line. So what do we need? I put a list of materials in the video description. Um, I've actually got two of these USB IOs because the other one we're gonna use for our 440 automation project. If you haven't watched that video, uh, card right here, take a look. Um, so we got our circuit board and the little case. Let's throw this guy together. Plug in our device just via USB cable. You see the lights light up. Uh, in PathPilot settings, make sure you have enable USB I.O. board. And there's only one little glitch. I, th I guess this thing was really meant originally for the mill. So the instruction manual says to use P0 through P1. So P0 would be the first solenoid, P1, P2, P3. In the lay, that's P4 through P7. No big deal, the, but the instruction book doesn't say that, which uh, it should. M64 turns it on, M65 turns it off. So M64 P5 should turn the first solenoid on, which we'll see with a red light and maybe be able to hear it. Boom, red light's on. M65 P5 should turn that one off. Oops, typed in the wrong thing. It's off. So we'll do that again with uh, P7. That should be the last one. Awesome. Uh, actually, sorry, eight, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, sorry. Eight would turn up the last one. Yeah, and then 65 P8, 65 P7. Awesome. Um, so these are 110 AC solenoids. So you either need to get an electrician's help or, or be confident that you're doing this in a safe manner, both for your own healthy, for the health and the machine and so forth. Power cables, I would suggest the link in the video description or buy like 20 of these. We cannot believe how often we use them and they're so cheap when you have them on hand. So let's strip the end off one. The solenoid needs 110 volts AC. If we connect, in this example, say the white up to the white, this is disconnected here, um, the white up to the white and the yellow up to the black or vice versa with AC, it doesn't matter. Um, this solenoid will turn on and turn off. So how do we use a relay to cause that to happen? Well, what you do is you connect two of them together permanently, say the white and the, um, actually, you know, we'll do the white and the white together permanently with a wire nut here in a second. And then, you put the black and the yellow into these blue terminal blocks. And what happens is when the relay closes, the relay is like a little switch and it's able to um, connect these two together, which is what allows this to close the connection or circuit and toggle this thing on and off. Relay zero has NC, common and NO. Common is the shared one. NC means it's normally closed and NO means it's normally open. So we would wanna hook our AC line from the wall up to the common, and then the normally open will get the relay. What that means, or the 
solenoid. So that means when it triggers the normally open, it goes to closed and that turns our coolant on. And when it releases, that goes back to open. So we'll skip the first terminal block and we'll go our power line in the second and our solenoid into the third. Okay. And power line is this guy. That's too long of a off. Double check. Common is from the power cable and then goes normally open. This is already connected over. So let's just go try it with one and see if she works. So we're wired up. From a safety perspective, I've got this exposed now, um, but we'll obviously enclose all this and keep it away from the liquids in case um, there is a leak and I'll wire um, electrical tape around these wire nuts and so forth. You can see I've got the blinking light. Um, most of the time it's worked when we just plugged it in. Once I had to actually reboot Pathpilot for it to kind of talk to it. Um, so just a, a tip in case you had that problem, but let's, uh, let's give it a shot real quick. So I'm gonna turn the solenoid open first, although that way we're not running coolant without a valve open. So P64, M64 P5 should start the turret coolant. That opened, okay, yeah, sorry, that opened the solenoid for it. So now if I turn on the coolant, boom. Now if I type in, M64 P6, our drill coolant should come on. <laughs> it does. And now I can turn off the uh, turret coolant. Just turned off and I can turn, uh, I don't want to turn off the drill coolant because I, I don't want the pressure to build up when it can't get out, but I can turn the coolant off here and then I'll close that valve. It's also very important to note what's the rated load of the relay in the uh, circuit board itself. And you can see here, it can handle 10 amps at 120 volts and our solenoids are inside of that. So that's an important thing to know and, and make sure you're staying within. Let's edit this post. So I keep my posts in this folder and we're gonna use this one that's the current lathe post I'm using. So I'm gonna hit Control C, Control V, and we're gonna call it coolant test. You are going to need to go to download Notepad++. Link in the video description, but it's a great way to edit these posts, I've since learned. So I'm gonna right click on Coolant++ and you'll have this option here to edit with Notepad++. When you install it, it'll probably look something like this. And uh, Matt Nichols is really the hero here. He has helped us a lot um, on setting up Notepad++ and on all of this code here. So the basic changes that we need to do are go to settings, style configurator, and change this select theme to Bespin. And then under language, these are in JavaScript. So click that and click save and close. Oh, you know what? Um, I think he said to add CPS here. Um, I think that's, yeah, I'm not sure how important that is because we're just editing existing. And then under view, he added function list. I've already got it checked and that's this list over here. And under language, J, check JavaScript. So that's going to just give us some helpful stuff to understand. Uh, you know, when we start typing something here, you know, right, you get these auto pop-ups, it's color coded, etc. So. Uh, again, I'm now really just resuscitating a lot of what Matt showed me how to do. Control F and type in coolant. It's already there. And you can start to see instances where the post processor calls coolant. So this isn't what I want. That's not what I want. Here we go. Commented line, set coolant after we have positioned at Z, set coolant, tool.coolant. So that's the right spot for this. So after this comment, but before the set coolant, we're gonna start writing this code. I'm not a programmer, I've done some Arduino stuff. Uh, let me walk you through it and you can see if you guys agree. So if tool.number is greater than or equal to one, so that we're trying to set tools one through eight to be one of the coolant lines. And what you do with double uh, ampersands in programming language, tool.number is less than or equal to eight. So that gives us the range of one to eight. Then, 
start your little open and close brackets. And instead here, we're going to say write block. So once I select that, I can just hit tab and it auto fills the rest of it. M format dot format 58. So this is the kind of stuff I never would have known. Uh, actually, I want 60, um, four. Let me, let me finish this and I'll explain it. 64 comma P five. Oops. P five. And print, you got to end each line with a semicolon. I'm going to copy and paste that. And we're going to say 65 P six. So what does this do? This little block of code says if the tool that's being called is greater than or equal to one or less than or equal to eight. So between one and eight, it's going to post an M 64 P five M 64. If you remember, turns on P five, which is our turret coolant and M 65 turns off the, uh, gang tool. So we need to toggle each one each time just to make sure. I don't know how you could do some sort of conditional check because obviously you don't need to turn this off if it's already off, but it doesn't hurt us to do that. I'm going to do the same thing with an else if. I'm just going to copy this. If it's greater than or equal to nine and less than or equal to, you know, 15 or something for the gang, same thing, paste in this stuff. But I'll say, I want to turn off P5, turn on P6. Let's test it. You know what, while we're at it, let's sneak in a little Fusion 360 lesson. I want to make a new part, but I want to reuse these, actually all of these operations. So I see how I just selected them all by holding the control key. Right click, store as template. I'll call it lathe temp. Now, watch this. New design, right click, new component, we'll call it lathe coolant demo. L for line, I'm going to sketch on eh, this face, turn my origin back on, and let's ro I like to rotate this way. So see how the, is the blue is your Z axis, which is the left to right on a lathe. So let's make a part. Um, let's just say we got five inches that way because I got a piece of one inch stock in there. And let's just come over and oh, hell, do it wrong. So I want that line to be horizontal, so I'll click horizontal vertical, click on that line. That's half an inch, so let's let's make this. 0.5. You know what? Let's make this a little bit less. 0.45. And I'm just playing around here. 120. Oops, what's going on here? There we go. 025. So I got a little shape there. S is the keyboard shortcut to pop up this little quick menu. R E V gets me to revolve. Profile is this. Axis this. Boom. Now, the problem is we needed a hole through that. Let's do the hole um, on the revolve. L for line. Sketch a line like here. Dimension it as 0.125. Stop sketch. Nothing changed because I'm going to right click on my revolve edit feature and I'm going to hold down the control key and that lets me deselect that portion and there's my hole. Let's rock and roll with the cam. This is so cool to me. Model cam. New setup first. Um, stock will be fixed size box of one inch, excuse me, fixed size cylinder. We'll say it's 1.5. So that centers it. We want to say offset from front of with 0.05 and eh, 0.02 at the front to clean it off. And that should be good on my setup. Now, this is the amazing thing. Right click on this setup, create from template, and open up lathe temp or click on lathe temp. It's there. You don't see it because I got to expand this menu. 
hit control G. Folks, facing code, profiling code, grooving code. The drill's not there because all I gotta do is pick my hole. So right click, edit, select the face. Now this is the spot, so I'm gonna say five, spot it, and then same thing here, geometry, pick the face, heights, um, let's just say whole bottom. Actually, we'll just go in an inch here. And that should be on a peck. Now, something I learned from some good feedback from the Porsche Fuel Cat video, when you face, you're facing to uh, the center of this part, which has zero surface feet per minute. It's really hard on your tools. It can break your inserts. Thanks to uh, my buddy Paul for that tip. So let's do this. Move our spot drill up to the top. So it's going to spot first, which gets rid of that little center area where you have no surface foot. I can still face the center. It's just good that I won't be cutting uh, any material there. And what's awesome is this is the perfect example of why this coolant thing is awesome, because I'm going to switch coolant from here to here. And then again, when we go from here to here. Awesome. So turret one through eight, that'll be tool nine, and this will be tool 11. Let's see if we get our part. Spot, awesome. Uh, turned off. Turrets turning on. Woo! Should be turret again. It is. We should be switching back to the drill. Awesome. Folks, that is a huge love it that is just freaking awesome i hope you enjoyed i think this is awesome i'm really glad that the usb board worked fine because we're going to use that on this 440 project um it also occurred to me you know we use a fog buster on our lathe sometimes and that has a 110 plug which i don't really want to cut so you can use something like this power tail which lets you plug it in here plug this into the wall and then we can control the relay switches here from the usb io device and that way we're not dealing with you know, cutting 110 power wires, damaging the fog buster, just awesome. So I hope you guys learned. Again, links are in the video description. Uh, yeah, take care. See you next Wednesday.